Oh, hello. Welcome to my kitchen. This is Tap Chong from Walk with Tap. Now, over the years, I enjoy seafood very much. It's probably one of my favorite food. And among the seafood, I love shrimp. I probably can eat shrimp every day. However, um, when I eat out, I very rarely order shrimp because I'm always suspicious whether they're going to cook it correctly, at least the way how I like it. Because most of the time, I was disappointed. So over the years, I have learned how to cook seafood to the way I enjoy. And I think I have found a good way to do it. And I'm going to show you how uh, today uh, in this uh, video demonstration. On top of that, I like to eat seafood with different kinds of vegetables. Again, which is very rarely done when I go out to eat. And uh, the seafood usually are not cooked in this, the type of combination I like. So using my perfect cooking system, I'm able to choose different kind of vegetables to go with my seafood. I can experiment with it. But more importantly is that I also get a nutritionally uh, balanced uh, meal. Because by using many different types of vegetables, I'm able to get the vitamins and the micronutrients that will be great for health purpose. So not only I'm going to enjoy the seafood, but I'm also going to eat a healthy meal. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I'm going to use four different kinds of seafood, which is uh, salmon, two different types of shrimp, and scallop, to cook with eight different types of vegetables. And since the vegetables are already prepped in advance, I'm able to cook the meal uh, very quickly. In fact, the meal could be done, was done in 30 minutes. So let's see how I'm able to achieve that, and I will show you uh, the process in this video. The wok that I'm using today is a Emusa light cast iron wok. And I have done a review of this wok in another video. If you are interested, you might want to take a look at it. Uh, one of the important factors of my perfect cooking system is to prep in advance. So all my vegetables are already prepped and stored in the refrigerator. And all I need to do is to pick what I want to cook today and uh, I can just go ahead and start uh, cooking and that saves a lot of time. The first dish I'm going to cook is a, a stir-fry salmon with an assortment of uh, vegetables. I start by uh, sauteing some um, garlic in uh, canola oil and I'm going to start cooking the salmon first because um, when I stir-fry the salmon separately from the vegetable I can better control the texture uh, as well as the um, flavoring of the salmon. So that gives me uh, greater control in um, creating the type of um, uh, both uh, flavor and texture that I like. I uh, saute about uh, 10 ounces of salmon that I cut it into strips. Now this uh, salmon uh, are fresh salmon that have never been frozen. They work much better than the frozen salmon because the frozen salmon, the, the flesh are affected by the freezing process and they break apart uh, much easier. Uh, this fresh salmon uh, stir fry really well. Uh, I enjoy uh, the stir frying because it takes uh, much less time to stir fry it than otherwise if I cook it in any other way. And as you can see in here, that I can stir fry uh, this uh, amount of salmon in about uh, uh, probably 30 seconds. Uh, on top of that, um, the salmon are cut into strips and, uh, and this still gives enough uh, bite to the salmon so I can uh, sear the salmon in the hot oil and provide a very nice uh, uh, flavor. Uh, I include the skin on it which also adds flavor to the salmon. So here I added the seasoning. Again, I use uh, uh, mushroom uh, seasoning together with ginger powder, garlic powder, onion powder, kind of my standard set of uh, uh, seasoning. Um, I uh, tried not to use uh, anything too strong like paprika or um, cumin. Uh, as you can tell, um, the, the salmon is cooking very rapidly. Uh, after I add the um, seasoning, um, the salmon uh, start to sear. And once the salmon sear, you can see that the, the, the flesh start to separate from each other. And at this point, I try to stir fry it very gently because I like to keep the salmon uh, as intact as possible. Uh, if you are standing here with me, 
you can smell the wonderful aroma that's given off by the salmon in combination of with the um, seasoning. Uh, at the end, I just add a touch of uh, oyster sauce to uh, provide a little bit of uh, saltiness to the salmon. And uh, then you can already tell if you look closer that uh, the salmons are already start to sear uh, very nicely. So at this point, I add some uh, scallions uh, to give uh, both uh, additional flavor to the salmon uh, as well as uh, color. Uh, scallion uh, is a wonderful uh, uh, substitution for onions because um, they cook very rapidly and you don't have to use uh, very much. And of course, uh, there are more convenience uh, to prepare and to prep and uh, scallion can store very well in the refrigerator usually up to uh, as long as uh, a week and uh, they are a very good uh, like touch up the condiment to add to almost any dishes. Uh, so at this point uh, I'm going to set the uh, salmon aside and then I'm going to cook the vegetables. Uh, after the vegetable is cooked then I'm going to add the salmon uh, on top of the uh, vegetables. Uh, I do not wash the wok uh, I just put a little bit more oil and uh, to saute some more uh, garlic before I uh, start cooking the uh, vegetables. As you can see that the wok is getting pretty hot and the garlic that I add to it uh, almost uh, turned brown uh, in the middle of uh, seconds. So I need to kind of add quickly. So the first thing I'm going to add is that I'm going to add some uh, purple cabbage. Um, the, again, the, as I have mentioned before, frying vegetable is a good way to generate uh, uh, flavor molecules. And, um, and then I add some uh, zucchini. And um, the, the zucchini and the um, purple cabbage give a good uh, color contrast. And lastly, I'm going to add some um, yellow squash that will give even uh, further uh, interesting color. Oh, uh, and then I add some uh, carrots as well. So, so in this uh, veg dish uh, with the um, with the stir fry salmon, I combine it with four different kind of vegetables, and I uh, really enjoy uh, having this vegetable to give the salmon uh, the extra um, flavor because of the vegetable that can provide. Now, as you can see, that the vegetable is frying uh, pretty good and. Um, I must walk away to do something which I can remember what, uh, but it's hey, I better get back and start stirring it because it's getting uh, getting a little bit burned. So um, anyway, uh, I probably would, uh, go and fetch some water, and I put some water in it. As you can see, that this is uh, generate lots of steam because the wok got pretty hot, and uh, so now uh, I able to uh, start the steaming process and I get the uh, um, uh, you know get the uh, stirring going again now I remember what I, why I walk away because uh, I went to get a fan I have a little fan which I can attach to the uh, next to the stove that to blow away the steam so the camera can uh, take pictures of what is going on so I'm adding some more water and again like I mentioned earlier before this is a, a wonderful way to cook vegetables you uh, steam it uh, after you fry them and uh, so the next step is that I'm adding different type of uh, uh, seasoning you can see I add some uh, uh, mushroom seasoning paprika followed by cumin onion powder garlic powder and uh, ginger powder so this are kind of like my standard set of seasoning so I start to uh, uh, stir it again and uh, to make sure that uh, everything is uh, well uh, mixed uh, this cooks very quickly uh, because um, um, the, the carrots are cut in very small size and um, everything uh, are cut in a size that they are uh, easy to cook. So um, I keep on adding a little bit more water uh, just to steam it um, uh, to the texture that, that, that I like. Um, the key is that uh, you can steam it as long as you want. Uh, the important aspect is that make sure there's a uh, sufficient fluid in the bottom of the wok so this way um, the, um, uh, the ingredient will not be uh, overburned 
will not be burned or over uh, burned. Yeah. So uh, now I uh, add a little bit of uh, oyster sauce uh, just to uh, provide a bit of flavor. And again, I don't add very much. So you can see that this dish has no salt added. And uh, the seasoning is intended to bring out the natural flavor of the uh, vegetables and the oyster sauce just to give a little bit um, additional flavoring. So the dish uh, provides a very natural tasting uh, flavor that represented by the vegetables that uh, find in this uh, uh, dish. So I took uh, this uh, vegetable and then put it on a plate and then I transferred the salmon and put uh, on top of it. And uh, this is a good way uh, to serve the dish as the salmon is the highlight of the dish. The next dish I'm going to cook is a uh, shrimp fried rice dish. Uh, I love fried rice and uh, over the years uh, I have tried different methods in cooking fried rice. and uh, I now have a way that I can cook my rice uh, very efficiently and I really like this approach. Uh, as you can see that uh, I did not uh, wash the wok, I just uh, kind of uh, brush away whatever the, the, the remaining the debris that I have from the last dish and I just add canola oil and I find it's not really necessary uh, to um, wash the wok and uh, the flavor uh, can be carried from one dish to the next. So I first start out by um, frying the rice. Oops, I forgot to add garlic. I normally add garlic, but that's okay. Uh, I uh, use about, uh, in this case, I use about two, two cups of rice and I use a um, hamburger meat chopper to uh, break up the rice and that works really well and I'm glad that I uh, discovered this method for breaking up the fried rice. I used to use a spatula and it would make a huge mess. So. Um, I fry the egg directly with the rice and I find that not only it is more efficient but it also makes the rice uh, taste better. It gives the rice that smoothness that I really uh, enjoy. And uh, So I put a little bit oil in the middle of the wok by making some space and then I crack an egg directly uh, in the middle of the wok. I, I let the egg to um, fry slightly. Uh, I wait till the egg whites start to turn uh, uh, white actually and then I just stir everything into the uh, fried rice. But very easy to do and it takes uh, uh, very little time and it makes cooking the fried rice easier. I used to fry the eggs separately and that takes uh, uh, much more time than uh, this. So again, efficiency is an important part of my cooking system. Now here I add uh, a bunch of uh, uh, cauliflower and this cauliflower, um, I chop them up into little uh, pieces and, and then I also add the um, shrimp directly to it. Um, I, I want the, again like uh, everything I cook, um, which is plant-based, which is the, uh, represent the first letter of the perfect cooking system, I, I try to include as much um, vegetable as I possibly could. And as you can see in here, um, the cauliflower and the shrimp are added at the same time because uh, both of them take a little bit time to cook. And then I add uh, some uh, purple cabbage. And um, the purple cabbage is added uh, to give uh, color, of course, and to give flavor as well. Uh, most people don't like cabbage. And actually, cabbage has a very good flavor. Um, the, the, the trick is that cooking vegetables to make them enjoyable and palatable is to combine them with um, other type of vegetables. And the combination uh, give uh, uh, a variety of flavor and also uh, provide different textures to the dish and to uh, make the, the dish uh, far more uh, pleasant and enjoyable. So uh, what I'm doing here is that I stir frying I, uh, the uh, vegetable, uh, the cauliflower, the cabbage and the shrimp and it's important that you keep uh, uh, stirring it uh, so that uh, everything will be cooked, uh, can be cooked evenly. I think here is a very good example that um, the advantage of uh, using a wok uh, in cooking, uh, particularly in cooking uh, fried rice. Uh, if you use a scallop, uh, it is very hard to stir properly and uh, the end result is that you're going to have um, food material all over the place. Uh, somebody has asked me, uh, in fact many people have asked me, has, uh, oh I don't have a wok, uh, I like stir fry but 
can I do stir fry? And my answer to that is that yes, of course you can do stir fry, uh, with the exception is that um, uh, the wok is designed for stir fry. So the, the next step is uh, uh, adding the, uh, seasoning. So in here I add paprika, I add cumin, uh, mushroom seasoning, uh, onion powder, and garlic powder, and uh, ginger powder. Uh, this is the, the basic set of seasoning that I uh, use. And, um, and then I uh, add um, carrot. Uh, shredded carrot I add mainly uh, for texture as well as for, for color. Since the carrot is already shredded, so it will cook very quickly. And that's why I added them uh, at the uh, end. Uh, now uh, I think I'm getting to almost done. As you can see that the shrimp is uh, uh, pretty much cooked. And using this method is excellent for cooking the shrimp because uh, you will not overcook the shrimp. And by adding the shrimp, uh, in this case, I know that this shrimp is a, a medium-sized shrimp. And uh, so it will take a little while to, uh, to cook. That's why I add it early together with the, uh, with the cauliflower. So now I add a little bit, touch of uh, oyster sauce, a touch of uh, hoisin sauce. The oyster sauce to give it um, some extra flavor and the hoisin sauce give it the fried rice a touch of sweetness. Now, if you don't like the sweetness, then you can uh, skip the uh, uh, hoisin sauce. Um, in, in this case, I like the sweetness because of the shrimp and the hoisin sauce seems to go well uh, together. And uh, now we are uh, close getting done. And uh, lastly, I add some the green onion. I add the green onion at the end because I don't want to cook the green onion too much. I want the green onion still have a little bit of crunch and some crispness uh, to it. So um, here we are. We are. Um, done with this dish. Uh, I, I love uh, shrimp rice fried rice and it has always been my favorite since I was a child. Unfortunately, shrimp fried rice is always very expensive when you go to a restaurant uh, because shrimp always uh, combine a premium. And on top of that, uh, in most places when they cook shrimp fried rice, the shrimp is very small. They use tiny shrimp. So you really don't get much of a bite of the shrimp at all. So when I cook shrimp fried rice, I always uh, use the uh, medium shrimp, shrimp that are of a uh, reasonable size, so I can get a good bite at it. And of course, um, uh, you, uh, if you use uh, larger shrimps, uh, it, uh, you cannot add as much um, shrimp as you would like. But nevertheless, um, I really enjoy shrimp fried rice. It's one of my um, favorite uh, dish of uh, all time. You know, uh, cooking a good shrimp can be uh, tricky. And uh, over the years, uh, I have um, do a lot of uh, try and errors and I read about uh, how to cook shrimp and ultimately timing is the most important thing in cooking a good shrimp. Uh, as you can see here, uh, the shrimp need to be uh, firm but not hot and the worst is that when the shrimp overcook, they become uh, leathery and at that time you take away all the pleasure of uh, eating uh, shrimp. So um, this actually turned out to be really good because uh, the timing is just right and the amount of time the shrimp was uh, actually cooked in, in fact uh, uh, slowly with within the rice because the rice is keep mixing with the shrimp and the stir frying allow the shrimp to cook evenly. So uh, this is actually it's a very good way to cook shrimp and I find that when you cook shrimp with fried rice uh, you can use fairly large shrimp as long as you give enough time to make sure that the shrimp is uh, properly cooked. Okay, so I've been messing around in the background, try to uh, um, clean up the wok. And uh, like I said, I, I really did not wash the wok. What I did is that I just um, uh, obviously uh, take the fried rice out and uh, then left a lot of little debris on the, on the, on the, in the wok. So what I did is that I just take a, uh, basically a dry brush and brush off uh, all the remaining rice. So we are still in real time. I did not uh, edit the video other than put in the pictures for the dish and talk a little bit about that shrimp fried rice dish. Uh, and so we are still in time with uh, what we were doing. So now uh, I'm ready going to, to cook the, the next dish. So I started by saute some um, garlic. Uh, the next dish is a, is a egg and scallop um, dish. Uh, this is a very quick dish. And uh, here I put in the six uh, eggs and um, I'm going to uh, 
put the scallop very early into the egg because the scallop takes some time to cook. Again, by cooking the scallop with the egg, that's one advantage is that it avoids overcooking the scallop. Uh, uh, like any other seafood, scallop, uh, once it's overcooked, it lost its uh, 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 flavor and its texture become hard. So what in here, I have added my regular seasoning, which like I mentioned before, many paprikas and uh, onion powder, garlic powder and ginger powder and some cumin and uh, of course uh, mushroom seasoning as well. Now this is uh, the typical way how I cook the egg. Uh, I uh, gradually fold the egg uh, into the middle of the wok and as you can see the wok is very well seasoned and because the egg do not stick to the wok uh, much at all, I can easily move the egg from the surface of the wok. Um, the scallop uh, is, is being cooked uh, again slowly, uh, cooking together with the egg and uh, but it cooked very fast because scallop, uh, again, um, for those of you who have cooked scallop before, they can be easily overcooked. So I added uh, carrot and um, green, uh, green onion uh, to garnish the dish. And uh, I'm kind of checking the scallop to make sure that they are cooked properly. Uh, it looks like uh, I need to cook them a touch longer. So we can uh, kind of, uh, now I'm uh, trying one. Hmm. I think it, it's okay. I think it's good. it's almost done. And you can see the scallop is still look very nice and uh, plump uh, because uh, once they're overcooked, they, they shrink and um, that is a bad sign. So um, I try not to stir up the egg too much. I want the egg to be uh, slightly soft and still have that uh, um, nice, um, you know, fluid uh, texture. So uh, I think I'm done. So I just shut off the, the stove. Okay, uh, so I took the scallop uh, off the stove and um, and serve it on the dish. Now I add a little bit of uh, uh, oyster sauce uh, on top of it just to garnish it. Uh, again, the, the flavor, I want it to be as natural as possible, the flavor of the scallop and the egg, uh, which has been, uh, some season has been, seasoning has been added, but uh, I do not want to over, uh, overpower it with uh, saltiness. So uh, I think it turned out really well. As you can see, the scallop looks really nice and plump and uh, this is a sign that they uh, were not overcooked. Um, in fact, uh, if you were here with me, you would probably agree the scallop, the texture of the scallop is really uh, quite nice. Uh, I think I did a good job this time. I do not cook scallop right all the time. Sometimes I overcook them and of course I got frustrated myself when I overcook uh, the scallop um, because they're pretty expensive. So okay, now we are uh, pretty much down to the home stretch. Um, the last dish I'm going to cook is a, um, a large shrimp. Uh, they call it colossal shrimp because it is um, uh, is one of the largest shrimp. And this is a um, shrimp very different from the shrimp that I use in the yeah. shrimp fried rice. The shrimp fried rice, the shrimp I use is culture shrimp, and they have a very different uh, texture. I, I like them very much. But this shrimp is uh, quite special. It is uh, from Argentina. It's called a wild caught shrimp and um, it has a very different uh, both flavor and texture and I cook them with uh, this uh, assortment of uh, uh, vegetables that uh, I really enjoy. Uh, as you can tell, um, my wife was talking to me at the background um, so I want to just tell you that all this meal I cook is uh, just uh, my regular meal. Uh, I, I'm cooking, uh, I was cooking this meal for, um, for us and uh, I was going to cook some extra that I'm going to take it uh, to my son as well. That's why this is uh, for four people, so it is about food. So again, I start out with some uh, carrot and uh, I add some um, Brussels sprouts, which I uh, got to like more and more as time go by. And I add some cottage. Um, broccoli uh, followed by some yellow squash. Um, you, you can see that um, I am uh, adding these vegetables from the, my uh, pre-prepped container. Uh, I don't use all of them. So uh, throughout the week I use a little bit here, a little bit there. It gives me a lot of um, the possibilities in cooking them. So right here I have um, uh, four different kinds of um, uh, vegetable. So give me that assortment. And all these vegetables uh, I really enjoy and I think uh, they go well uh, together. So this uh, combination is different from the combination, uh, the one that I cooked earlier with uh, the salmon. 
uh, how do I come up with this combination? Uh, a lot of time I just experimenting. I just trying to see what works and what doesn't work. And uh, sometimes it works out better than the others. So now I'm putting my basic seasoning again: onion powder, garlic powder, ginger powder, uh, and uh, some uh, mushroom uh, seasoning. Um, I uh, decided not to put in the paprika and cumin at this point because I'm going to put in a the sriracha sauce at the end. Again, um, I uh, put in uh, the water to um, steam the vegetable. Um, now, the, the nice thing again I want to uh, say about uh, a wok is that uh, um, you, you can uh, cook the various amounts in a wok. So, uh, when you have frying pans, uh, people buy frying pans of different sizes uh, because uh, you know, you, when you cook small amount, you use a smaller frying pan. But the, the way because of the how the wok is slow, uh, everything to pull into the middle. So you all you need is just one wok, and that wok can serve all different uh, uh, functions for cooking uh, meat uh, meals of uh, different sizes. So I keep the steam the, the vegetable by adding more uh, fluid and to make sure that I have enough uh, fluid without it uh, drying out. So now uh, I'm ready to add the shrimp. I Quite often I fry the shrimp separately uh, because I want to have a better control of the texture of the shrimp. Uh, but this particular dish, I, I want the shrimp to pick up the basically pick up the flavor from the vegetables and vice versa so the vegetables can get uh, more of the flavor from the shrimp now this shrimp is like i mentioned it's a wide cut uh, um, saltwater shrimp so they are a little bit saltier than freshwater shrimp and so using this method i'm able to uh, have the uh, saltiness of the shrimp transfer into the vegetable and so make the vegetable uh, have a, a greater a seafood flavor to it. Um, I, I keep a close eye on as I'm uh, cooking the shrimp because I do not want to overcook the shrimp. So um, I, I continually looking at the, the texture of the shrimp. Now right now of course uh, the texture of the vegetable is not as important as the shrimp. I already reach approximate the texture of the vegetable that I want. Of course I do not want to overcook the vegetable as well. Um, so in this step it's really important you, you should keep continue to stir fry um, continue to stir the content so that the shrimp will uh, cook uh, properly. Uh, basically the shrimp is cooking in a mixture of uh, oil and uh, uh, water. So lastly I put in uh, yeah. some chirastra uh, sauce um, and then uh, at the end I put in some uh, portobello mushroom. Now the portobello mushroom is very interesting because uh, uh, the portobello mushroom uh, are able to absorb fluid very very well. And as you can see, now the, uh, the dish start to get um, dry. Uh, the fluid at the bottom of the wok are pretty much picked up by the portobello uh, mushroom. Um, however, I want to cook the portobello mushroom just a touch more. And one wonderful thing about portobello mushroom is that because of its uh, property of uh, soaking up fluid, is uh, wine. So I'm going to put in some uh, um, rice wine. And the rice wine will pick up by the pot of mushroom and give uh, really a wonderful flavor. And now just a few more stir and the dish is uh, ready to be served. Okay, so the shrimp looks really nice. And um, if you again, if you are here with me, you will agree the shrimp tastes very well. It's not overcooked. And I think um, I did a good job. I, I would uh, say uh, I uh, timed the shrimp uh, properly. I did not overcook it at all. Okay, so here you have it. Cook a, a seafood um, dinner. Uh, actually, that's enough probably for four or five people in about uh, 30 minutes. 
and I have、um, a fried rice dish, a, a shrimp with vegetable, a stir fry salmon with vegetable, and a, a scallop with、uh, egg.、Uh, this will make a very nice meal for、uh, inviting guests over. And I think if you cook something like this, they probably will be quite impressed. If you like to see more recipes, cooking tips, and benefits of my cooking system, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Walk with Kak. By pressing the subscribe button below. Thank you for watching. See you next time.